Hi everybody, it's Kim George. I am Kim Likes to Color with the number two on Instagram. I'm also Snickerdoodling LLC, both on Instagram and Facebook. Um, welcome to my channel today. Today we're going to talk about how to use and blend alcohol markers. Um, this tutorial has been a long time in the making. I've had a lot of people request this, both on Instagram before I even had a YouTube channel, and then of course on the channel. Um, so I thought I would sit down today and try to share with you some of my favorite tips and tricks with alcohol markers. So a lot of you might not know this, but before, um, probably up until about a year ago, I colored exclusively with alcohol markers um, and almost colored only mandalas. Um, which some of you might find hard to believe, uh, or maybe not. Anyway, um, so I will show you some things that you can do with alcohol markers and show you some books that I like to color in. Um, one of the things we'll talk about today, of course, is the different papers with alcohol markers and how the ink behaves. Um, the books that I used to love to color in the most, of course, had a cardstock paper. So this is a page I colored and I love coloring koi fish. Um, I just think they're beautiful anyway, but this book is called, let me find it. Um, it's got a little thing on here. Oh, it's got two little things, sorry. Hang on guys. Oh. Garden Paths and Forest Trails. And this is by a company, they were Action Publishing and I think they've rebranded, so there's something else now, but this was a page I colored in that book with alcohol markers. Also, uh, this as I do this, I'm covering up my other lights, so I'm sorry. This page um, was really pretty. I One of my favorite things to color with are the bright oranges with the Copic markers. Um, anyway, but this has a lot of beautiful pictures in it. Another um, set of books that I love are the Color Yaw books. I think a lot of you have seen those around Instagram. This is from, let me get the title page on this one for you guys. Mandela's Magical Nature. And again, it's by the brand Color Yaw. They are based out of France. Um, I absolutely love their stuff. One of the things that I don't like is that it takes forever to get their books to release in the U.S. They have a large Mandela's book that I've been waiting on for over a year. And I, I know there's probably a lot of red tape and things like that with getting the, this published over here. But their stuff is gorgeous. Their designs are so pretty. But here is an example of how I blended like the blue. I use blue for the center of a flower. The bright oranges again that I love um, on this flower. And let's see if I have some other designs in here. Oh, I love this one. Y'all are going to laugh at me. I'm afraid to color faces. <laughs> so... I colored these flowers, and then I thought, what in the heck am I going to do for a face? And then I thought, okay, rainbow face. So we went from green to turquoise to purple to pink. But again, this is all alcohol-based markers. So that's another book. And this is all that 80-pound, nice, thick cardstock. Um, the last set of books that I really enjoy coloring in and colored, gosh, I've got like, I don't know how many of these, seven, eight, nine, um, the Color It brand, they, uh, and all of these are spiral bound at the top. They've got this nice thick paper. This is uh, Mandela's volume four. I think they have eight or nine now, I'm not sure. I've lost count. But here's a page that I colored with alcohol markers. And you can see the blending and the pinks and the greens in here that I did. Um, here's another one. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, here, this one's really pretty. Oops, sorry guys. Uh, this is alcohol markers with the gold markers here. Uh, those are actually Hobby Lobby markers, by the way, those gold markers. They aren't gold, metallic gold, they're yellow gold. Uh, let me find another one. Where is it? Here we go. Um, again, this is alcohol markers, and I just love blending with these. So let's talk about how to do this today. Thanks for putting up with my paper gymnastics there for the time being. Okay, so alcohol markers come in all shapes and sizes and different brands. So here I have four brands that uh, stay in my toolkit. So of course the Copic brands are my favorite. Uh, the Copic brand, there's not brands. Um, Spectrum Noir, we'll talk about this one in a little bit. I've got, of course, Prismacolor markers. And then this is called Master's Touch, but for those of you in the US, this is Hobby Lobby's brand of marker. 
Um, all of these markers are equally nice. Any brand. I know a ton of people use the Ohuhu markers, and I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but those markers are so popular, so I'm sure they're fantastic. Um, the one thing that for me makes the Copic stand out is the ability to refill these. So you can actually um, replace these. They, they usually come with a chisel tip and a brush tip. I don't know if y'all can see that. Um, but you can replace those and you can pull out the um, chisel tip and you can buy a uh, refill ink. So if you have a lot of colors that you use, like this is uh, YG05, um, I use this one quite a bit. You can see the ink <laughs> level in here, but it makes it more cost effective to buy, um, buy this marker YG05 once instead of paying $7 every time it runs out, and then just buy the refill ink. So that for me, um, just from a cost-effective perspective, especially if you're on a coloring budget, that makes these really stand out. And the ink also, of course, is very pigmented and beautiful, but you'll get that with a lot of different markers. So I will say you don't have to spend a lot on alcohol markers to find something you like that you can enjoy and easily blend with. I think these, oh, you can see here, these Hobby Lobby markers, I paid $5.99, so it's still a little pricey, but it just depends on what your budget is um, and what you're looking for. The Prismas I got in a set of 72 for my birthday. I don't know what the cost point is. You can buy these. They Hobby Lobby no longer carries these individually, but you can buy them on like um, an art site like Blick.com or out on the internet, I believe. Um, I think those are still available open stock. But I wanted to show y'all, oh, this is so much fun. You talk about blending alcohol markers made easy. This takes all the guesswork out of it. This is a three-in-one marker set. It's called Tri-Blends by Spectrum Noir. And you can see here, it's got three different shades of markers. So they just pull apart. So here's the lightest color, the second lightest, and then this one's like a double-edged guy. But here's one, two, and three. And now you know I've got three colors that will perfectly blend with each other. And isn't that cool and easy? And these come in sets of like, I think five or six markers. Um, you can get them on Amazon or probably at any art stores, but these are amazing. And I love these and they're so pretty. And I will show you an example of one. Um, so let's talk about the difference between alcohol markers and water-based markers. So, okay, here we go. let me get some paper here. I've got here uh, three Crayola markers and three Copics. Let me scoot all this other stuff out of the way. And the uh, Crayola markers are water-based and the Copics are, of course, alcohol-based. So the water-based markers are nice because they won't bleed through your paper. Uh, but they do take longer to dry. So that's the um, trade-off. Another thing, and I will show you in a little bit, is did you know that you can actually take water and mix with your water-based markers and get a little bit of a watercolor effect? And I will show you that in just a little bit too. <clears throat> um, alcohol-based markers, because the ink is alcohol-based, <clears throat> excuse me, it dries quickly because it's, you know, that alcohol is evaporating, right? So let me show you. Let's do a little difference here. Now this is the um, vellum paper that I have. This is the very textury cardstock that's super premium and super nice. So we'll start with this. So I'm going to take, um, the way that I blend my alcohol markers is I start out with the lightest color and you can do this just to sort of play with colors. Then I'll take my medium color and the key, oops, you know what? I just dorked that, <laughs> hang on. Start over. I take my lightest marker and then I take the next lightest color <clears throat> and then I'll take this first marker while the ink is still wet and blend back over it to blend them together. Then I'll take the darkest color <clears throat> here and see where that line is. So I'm going to take the lighter color and blend over that to blend it together. And now I've created a little bit more of a line with the first color, so now I'll go back over the first color. <clears throat> so there. And sometimes I even take the first color all the way down. 
to sort of dilute it. But there you get a really pretty gradient going light to dark with this. So this is alcohol-based markers. And uh, let me do the same with the Crayola. So the Crayola, you can still blend <clears throat> and get something really pretty. And you know what, I'm sorry guys, I did not even zoom in on that. I bet half of you have already abandoned. <laughs> Said, oh, I'm gonna go watch somewhere else. Okay, um, I don't, Crayolas don't have, uh, um, what, do, what is my word? They don't have color names on their markers, so I just have three greens that I grabbed. So here's the lighter green, and we're gonna do the same process. So here's a lighter green we're putting down, a more medium green. One other thing too is that your alcohol markers are going to run and I'm gonna say take the lighter green. Now you can see here, I don't know if you can see it, but the paper is starting to peel, and that's because of the water and this brand of paper. And then the same thing, we'll go back over the medium. So <clears throat> for this paper, I don't like water-based markers, uh, but you can see you could still get a real pretty, if you're not looking at that little paper mess there, you can get a real pretty light to dark blend. Now let me show you something cool. If I take just a little bit of water with this brush pen, I'm just gonna put the tiny strip of water there. And now I'm going to take one of the green markers. I'll take the dark green and just sort of color with it. And look at that, now it looks like watercolor. Isn't that cool? And you can even, um, another thing that you could do that's kind of cool is if you add more water, oops, you see this. So now I've got a lot of water, just like water-based. And you can just do sort of um, like watercolory things. Maybe you have an, uh, a brush that, a water brush that has no water on it. But watch this, if I take the tissue and blot it, look at that really pretty watercolor effect you can get. So there's a little bonus tip for you today. Okay, so this is, um, while we did this, this is just showing you how to color on, I think most of the time, if you're gonna color with alcohol markers, you're probably not gonna be on this really textured art paper. You'll probably be on cardstock or Amazon paper, so let's move to that next. Okay, let me find a page in the Color Yaw book that I haven't colored. Okay, here's the page. What I'm going to do here, and now I'm just, I'm not going to look at water markers anymore. We're just gonna focus on the alcohol markers. So let's look at this little fan area right up here. And what I will do is demonstrate again how I like to blend my colors. So I take the lightest color first. Now these are going to run, if you, um, or bleed. So if you remember, um, Paper is porous, and the more ink you lay down, the ink's gotta go somewhere. So the more you push the ink onto the paper, it's going to spread out like a puddle, right? So you just wanna be careful. Like as I come up to this edge, so do use a very light um, stroke. And another thing I like to do is just sort of flick the color. And I'm going to come back in with the medium here blend that in there and now come back with the color at the top and now it, I can see it starting to spread a little bit so as I get near the edges just being real careful so there's an example on cardstock how to do that okay and now let me show you on Amazon paper now remember the key with Amazon paper is to be sure, and we can just reuse this page we had here. Be sure to add a piece of cardstock below your Amazon page because it is going to bleed for sure. In fact, I forgot to show you when we did this example before, the watercolor did not bleed, but the alcohol marker did. So just uh, water water-based markers. Sorry, guys. Okay, so. Don't forget to put cardstock behind your Amazon paper. So on this one, um, 
I'm going to do the same thing. I'll do it right up here. And I'm gonna show you, let me show you kind of how this bleeds. Zoom in a little bit more. Okay. If I just sit and hold this, I just keep dabbing more and more ink down. Do you see it spreading outside the lines as I add more ink? So that's what you need to be kind of aware of. It especially spreads quickly on Amazon paper. So what you wanna do is um, maybe not color all the way up to the line or just be so feather light as you're up against that line. And then you can get real generous with the color in the middle, but just feather light up against that line. And then we'll add the medium color. So now this is adding more ink. So definitely come inside that color and you see how it's already spreading to the outside for you. Okay. And then down here, we'll add the darkest color. And again, I'm gonna go feather light, especially on those weird angled corners. And so now I'm just gonna flick the color up. Do the same here. And then from the top, I'll bring the color down. And again, be careful because we have porous paper. Okay. So that's how that works. So that's Amazon paper. Um, all right, so what I wanted to do today is sort of do a mini color along with you guys to show you um, how I would color a page in a book like this. So what I did, I already colored, let me find it, half the page. Oops. Okay. There we go. So I colored half the page. And what I thought I could do is show you some of how I would color this and what my thought process is as I color this. So I will be right back and we will start that. Okay, and we're back. Um, one thing I wanted to do, when I go to pick out colors, I wanted to share this process with you a little bit. I have, uh, let me see if I can zoom out. This is a color chart. Um, it's like a swatch chart for Copic markers. And I got this from uh, Sally Allnock, and she's got an Etsy, or you can go to her, I'm sorry, her website, sallyallnock.com slash hex chart. I think I paid a couple dollars for this, so this is not free. Um, so I'm sorry I can't hand it off to you guys. But what's nice about this chart is it organizes the colors in a way that you can see what might blend nicely with another color next to it. Um, so that said, what I'm doing here, I picked this family of three colors. I picked, um, let me zoom in here, these three right here. They're all just nested right up against each other, so that was an easy choice. Um, if you don't have a chart like this, one thing you can do, and I'll show you the homemade chart that, oh, you can see my little homemade light stand. <laughs> um, Speaking of homemade, here's a chart that I made when I first started coloring with um, alcohol markers. Now this is watercolor paper, so it's thicker, but the PMs are the Prismacolors, the MTs are the Hobby Lobby Master's Touch, and then I started to get some um, Copics, so that's, I know how these are labeled, so for me, but you can just do like little swatch squares. Now they're not in order, so it might take a little eyeballing to see which colors are gonna go with each other, but it's still, it's again, just like with colored pencils, it's so important to swatch your colors. Um, another thing I forgot to mention before, when it comes to the storage of alcohol markers, I think the um, consensus from everything I've seen online is to store them horizontally. I, being a rebel that I am, I store mine vertically um, I've got this little case here. I don't know if this will show up on the camera. The camera might be too close, but it's a little, like a little nylon case that zippers and I just store them horizontally. But what I do is I store the brush tip part down or the nib point down. So some of these markers come with, um, the other one, like on the Copics, you saw a chisel tip and a brush tip, but like on the Prismacolors, and I think most colors you'll see, there is a nib 
Um, I think out of the box, these were a nib and a chisel tip. And then when I replaced them in open stock, I replaced with the brush tip. So the nib. So if you have a nib and a chisel tip, whichever um, color or whichever side you use the most, I would, for me, I store that side down. But again, I think the consensus is horizontal storage for these. Also, a little tip on your Copics. If you um, see a tip get really watery and juicy, um, that means your ink is about to pull. And the last thing you want is for it to just pull all over your page. So the trick there is to take the um, cap off the other side and it levelizes the pressure. I don't know if there's real science behind that or not, but it works because all of a sudden the ink float, starts to flow backwards and then you don't get a big splotch. And trust me, I have ruined pages with the splotch before. So, okay, so let me um, zoom in here and I will start coloring. I oh, like one of these, just so you, we're, we won't color the whole thing, but I'm just gonna show you how I would color this and how I did color these up here. Okay, so again, I'm gonna start out with the lightest color and just start making sure that this is in the camera. Okay. And I'm just gonna be real gentle with how I go along the edges here. Now, I am crossing the lines because I'm, I'm not coloring each little piece individually. I'm coloring it all together. So what I'm doing is I'm just being real gentle. And this takes a little practice. The brush tips take practice. I, you know, for the longest time I was just coloring with the nibs. And whether you use a nib or a brush tip, what you wanna be careful of is when you get into the little corners, you just wanna be so feather light and just super gentle to be able to get in, to tuck a little ink in that corner and not have it go way out of bounds, out of your lines. So that's the lightest color. So then I take the second color and I'm just gonna, you know, flick that color here. You flick back and forth, it doesn't really matter. Um, here we go. And if y'all like these colors, I'll put um, the colors for this page in my comment section. Okay, let's see. So now this is the darker color and first I'm going to outline this little part here to get it out of the way. And this is the part I was talking about where you just barely, barely touch that corner. And now I can just flick this darker color from here. I'm not trying to flick from the line. If I tried to flick from the line, I'd probably be inside that little shape there making a mess like I just did there. Okay. So then again, remember, now I take the medium color and go back over with the medium to blend that out. And then lastly, the top color. And it doesn't matter if you go back and forth. The key is to blend it while the ink is still wet. If you, now it's not um, the end of the world if you come back and the ink is dried, it's just gonna be a little trickier to blend it out. But you can see here, um, there you go. We got one little fan. It's darker when it's down, on, at least on these Copics, but you can see it dries a lot lighter uh, for this particular set. I don't know if that's true of all the colors or not. If you know, maybe you could let me know. So there's that side there. So I'll just show you that part. Um, one thing too, and I'll show you guys in just a second. Let me color a few more shapes and then I've got a couple more things I wanna cover with you. Um, we can do, so that's three color blending. You can do two color blending, like here, and I'll show you how to do that. Again, the process is the same. I'm gonna go light to dark. So I've got my light color here. This is called Pale Olive. It's really pretty. And I don't know why I was in just a muted color mood. I, you know, I would think, gosh, if I'm gonna demo alcohol markers, go bright or go home, but eh, I don't know, I just, Went with the muted colors this time. So now I went down this way with the lighter color. This is a Spanish olive. Okay, that actually sounds delicious. Uh, we'll go back this way. And again, and when you flick, that helps you not get a hard line where you are uh, mixing the two colors. So you can see here when I go back with the lighter color again, that second layer, 
it darkens it up. So I usually, you can just play it by, I was gonna say play it by ear, but by eye, I guess. You can just sort of look at it visually to see if you need to blend it more. And you can always add more dark down here if you wanted to. So that's how you would do a shape like that. Now, one thing you can do here, and maybe that's why you see it here, um, is if I make a mistake, a little chem trick is, hey, that's an opportunity to color that shape with a very dark color and then nobody will know about that mistake except for me. So that's why I came in with this really super dark brown. And sometimes these, you know it's funny, I draw these curves and say, oh, sometimes they're challenging to color, but they're so fun to draw. Um, let's see. So this, by the way, is from my book, Lighthearted Mandalas to Go. Uh, for those of you that enjoy this book, you'll be happy to know I'm almost done with a second version. So that should be coming out in a couple months. So here you can see that covered up that, except now I, looks like I got a little bit into there, but that's okay, that doesn't matter, right? So you can see the process and see how beautiful that is. So what I will do is put these color combos into the um, description section for you guys to enjoy if you wanted to color the same page um, on your side. And again, here is the book, and I like to color in my proof books so I don't waste them. Okay, um, a couple more things I wanted to show you. I promised you I would show you the Spectrum Noir marker and how that blends. So I'm gonna take off all these caps. And the other thing that's nice too is you will usually have a little bit of a cheat sheet here, JG1, 2, and 3. And that way, if you look at the marker, you can see, oh, this is uh, JG1, this is 2, this is 3. So that's going to tell you the order to blend them in. So we'll start out with the lightest. And let me see. It's hard to tell because I don't have any lines on here. So we'll start out real light here. Let me zoom in a little bit more for y'all. Okay, start out real light here. And that's one. So then here is two. And trust me, I have messed these up before. Especially with this other marker that has the two sides, it's real easy to get the sides mixed up. So on this one, I'm going back between the one and two to blend it. Now I'm going to blend number three and I'll start over the two. It's not really different from how I blend my color pencils, to be honest. And then I'll take this middle color and I'll color over that line into the darker color. And then once again, I'll top it off with coloring the top color. Now, isn't that gorgeous? And it's so easy. Like I said, it takes all of the science out of this for you. This particular set has really pretty, it's like an ocean colored set. It's got really pretty blues and greens. So I'll leave a link to these in the comments as well. Um, another thing too that people talk about for blending are colorless blenders. Um, I am not a huge fan, but a lot of people are. So I wanted to go ahead and show you how these work. So let me take, oh, let's take um, just a green here, just a Copic green. And this is a Prisma blender, it doesn't matter. Blenders are, but all it is is just, I think the alcohol. So I can go in here and there I've colored um, with that marker. This has also has a nib and a brush tip. So we're gonna use the brush tip side, the nib here, you can see that. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this brush tip and just start coloring at the top. And what it's going to do is it's adding that alcohol you see how it's smearing it, but it's also sort of lightening it. So it just kind of blurs it out a little bit. Don't worry about ink coming up on your tip, it's totally fine. But you can see, so it's making like this puddle wet looking <coughs> circle, but don't worry about that because that will dry. But it's just sort of fading the color out. So this is, you know, a, a lot of people use these and love them. Um, like I said, I'm just not a huge fan, but they are out there. You can get them on Amazon, just one marker at a time. You can get a set of three. Um, again, it will, that really blends through. In fact, it went down to the second piece of paper um, because of all the um, alcohol that I was pushing through on the page. But that will dry and it'll look a lot nicer than you, you won't see this outline of the alcohol there. 
Um, okay, so I think I covered everything I wanted to cover today. What I'd like to know is what do you struggle with with alcohol markers? Um, what questions do you have? What can I help you with? Um, this is really so easy, it's fun. It just takes a little practice, especially with the brush tips, but anybody, um, you can get such beautiful shaded effects, and it's fun to mix up markers with your pencils. If you are a pencil person, I encourage you to try some alcohol markers just for the fun of it. Um, okay, I think that's it for today. I thank you so much if you hung in there and watched um, this entire video. Uh, thank you again for always, you know, watching and supporting my channel. Um, if you like this, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't and you're interested. And also don't forget to hit the little notification icon so you can get alerted uh, when I do another video. So thank you again for joining me today and I hope y'all have a great Sunday. Bye-bye.